Hey guys, welcome back to the Client Spotlight series. And today I'm joined by D, I have to say D now, D Nasreen Hassan. Um, and today we're going to have a conversation about her experience in round three. She's been in all rounds of Sacred Family Pleasure. So I want to have this conversation with her to talk about her experience this round. So, Salam alaikum Nasreen, thank you for joining. Welcome, Salam Rosie, thank you for having me. Alhamdulillah, okay. Let's let's get straight into it, girls. So you have enrolled three times in Sacred Feminine Pleasure, and I love the fact that you've done that. I absolutely adore you. Um, so what made you what made you re-enroll? What made you sign up again? Yeah, it's crazy, hey, three rounds, but <laughs> it's been so worth it um every time I have joined. Um, and you know, I've always just joined up because I want to be in a container that's supportive, um, and this kind of sort of mindset work to help me uh, up level my mind. And um, you know, I'm a creative business owner, so I want to be in that environment that is um, helping me on my path. Um, and so that's why I've been in this container. That's like one of the reasons, but. The reason why I actually re-enrolled this time was because right at the end of the second session, um, I had like a really big uh, daddy wound come up for healing. And um, I realized I had so much shame and so much uh, self-blame and oh, so many heavy emotions that I wanted to purge. And, um, you know, it was causing me to be so stuck in life. And I knew... Uh, this was the place to come and get that support, get the healing. Um, and so that's why I re-enrolled. And, and another reason that I want to point out is that every session is not the same. It's not a repetition of the previous one. So it's not like, oh, I've done this before. What am I going to get out of it this time? Each time you tailor make it to the container of women. Um, so I just know I'm going to come there. And I'm going to get something magnificent out of it because, um, you know, it's not something that I can kind of like predict. I know this is what's going to happen. I just know that, you know, something um, really unprecedented and unexpected is going to take place. So it's always so exciting. And that's why I wanted to join up. Oh, I love that. That's me. Guys, Nasreen, seeing that, like, Nasreen, I want to tell you, see, seeing you evolve into this woman, like, Mashallah, the work that you're doing on yourself. And I want to take it back to you because you've taken your power back. You've reclaimed your inner, your inner feminine being, your inner creativity. Like I can see it in your vibe, in your aura. Like compared to who Nasreen was, like this was in August, right? August or September last year when we did our first round. Compared to that woman, you have evolved. I love about it. Like, girl, it's like I don't even know you. And like, who's who's this? Who's this? <laughs> Nasreen this gorgeous woman like you girl you were gorgeous before even more gorgeous now I'm about it and I can feel your aura is so much more lighter it's like you you just sound so much more like like confident you know who you are and um, you know what you want I'm getting that sense from you as well you know what you desire and you know you can have it and thank you for pointing out that each round has not been the same because I definitely do tailor it to the needs of the women in the container. And I know that your needs were different to last, last round. This need that you had was to discover more about yourself. So I love that you were able to do that, mashallah. Um, okay, so this round, what was um, the abundance we were in like for you? Like, what did you discover about yourself? Oh, that's a juicy question. <laughs> Um, I love the abundance rewiring. It is like my absolute favorite part of the um, the whole container. Um, and, you know, every week we do it. Um, it's, it's something also very, uh, what's the word? I mean, I want to say unexpected again, but I love it because, you know, you don't have to do hard work to heal. Like we sit there, we relax, we're laying on the couch and, um, you know, you're gently talking us through whatever topic we're healing that week. And um, for me, I just find it very, oh, it unearths really deep things. So even when I don't know, I've got um, a wound hiding in the shadows there, um, I find that it, it comes to the surface after the abundance rewiring. You know, I'll mm. be like, oh, yeah, Lord, this has come up for me. And I didn't know I had that before. So it's, um, 
I guess I, I could say for myself, the personal experience is being in this place of trusting. So I'm just there and I feel like I'm being held. And um, we go through the process and I'm looking forward to it because I know something is going to come up for me. And this is so important for me because I tend to have, I mean, this is shadow work, right? And I have a lot of things in the background that I can't see for myself because I grew up a lot of my life not being in touch with myself, not being present, um, disassociating from what was going on. Um, you know, I had a lot of chaos going around me, so I would do that. I'd check out. Um, and, and another thing was that I never thought I was entitled to having trauma or needing healing. Um, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, I've had such a good life. You know, my parents provided everything for me. What have I got to complain about? But you know, they, I just sort, sort of took it that that was, it, it was, you know, I, I deserved it kind of a thing. So, but I was really stuck in life and I couldn't figure out why I'd be doing um, healing and coaching and counseling and why am I still stuck? So um, this abundance rewiring is a total game changer. What can I say? I love that. Oh my gosh, girl. And one thing you mentioned is about trusting, like trusting the process to grow. And this is what a lot of people don't talk about. Like, yes, in the coaching container, I give you the best of me. I, I give you the tools for you to figure it out. But the real, the real um, unwinding and unhealing happens after the container. It could be like a few days after the session. It could be a week after the session. It's like the aha moment. Like, oh my God, now I get it. Oh, I do it this because of this and all that other layering comes up. And then that's when you heal. And, then, and this is so interesting. I, I noticed this with a lot of women that we always say, like, when you're in your masculine energy, we say that, that no one feels sorry for me. It's not that bad. Right. It's not that bad. Like, get over it. Oh, you know, it wasn't that bad, your childhood. Like, why am I, why I feel so ungrateful. And I know in the last container, we were talking about feeling ungrateful towards our childhood. Like, there's nothing, when you, when you talk about your trauma, it's not that you're feeling ungrateful. It's that you're healing. Your mind is realizing, I, I don't want to be in that identity anymore. I don't want to be that little girl who felt rejected or abandoned or unloved. I want to grow. I want to be a woman. I want to be this woman, this powerful woman that I know I can be. I want to be her now. And this is why it's so important to have these containers where you feel safe to grow, right? Like you feel safe to expand. Like you're not thinking, oh my gosh, should I say this? Should I not say this? Can I do this? Can I not do this? So I love that girl. Um, what was it like healing with the other women? Because I know for you, there's only, I think there was two ladies on the previous round that joined the next round. So what was it like with you being with, uh, around uh, strangers basically every every container what was that like oh you know it's funny that you ask what is it like being with strangers and I was thinking it really felt like I was with sisters you know friends um it is so warm such a welcoming atmosphere um all the women are just so supportive so um encouraging ready to heal, they, they, they non-judgmental, that is like the number one thing that stands out for me. And I feel so comfortable and I feel so encouraged, you know, um, I was never one to be vulnerable and um, I'd hear the other lady speaking and bringing up, you know, like taboo topics. <laughs> and I think, oh, wow, okay. It's giving me permission to speak about these things. And um, that was very, very liberating. Um, and also it gave me a sense of safety, you know, just hearing this and then being able to show up um, as my true self, as my authentic self and just show up fully. So um, it's beautiful. And then the other thing is that, you know, other women, we tend to all kind of be connected or resonating on the same frequency somehow. So they'll ask questions oftentimes, you know, maybe five, six women asking questions that I think are so relatable. And I would like hop on the call, even if it wasn't my week, like just to hear and I would, um, because I'd be thinking, yeah, I also want to know that and I'd be benefiting so much. So it's like, you know, the healing you're getting is not just like your question, like eight questions. It's like, I don't know, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80. So it's <laughs> right. I love yeah. that. And this is so true. Um, asking questions is what gets the healing. Because think about it, just like you said, it gave me permission to share. As women, this is how we heal. We share. 
we connect that way. It's like the, it, remember they say it takes the village to raise a child. We've lost the village. Like technology has taken over. We're all disconnected. So I've been in a container where you feel safe to talk about sex. You feel safe to talk about your traumas in childhood. You feel safe to talk about family issues. You feel safe to talk about whatever's going on in your mind that you can't say to like maybe your friends, maybe your family, maybe even your own husband or your own partner. It's like you have that safe space in this container with these women, but there's no judgment. I, one thing I'm really like very um, adamant about is there being no judgment. Like I don't, like as women, for us to heal, we have to stop judging each other. We have to stop shaming each other. And being in a group container with other women who get it, I feel like it's so much more powerful. Like you get to be vulnerable. You get to like unearth and purge and like feel that you get to you get to feel the abandonment, but then you get to be witness too. And I feel like for us women, we need to be witness more in our in our most vulnerable moments. So, and I want to add here, like, um, Nashreen, you being in that container and you being vulnerable ha- really helped the energy of the container. Um, you being willing to be coached, like, is a big thing. I know, I know for a lot of us, we feel like, okay, I've done the work, I've done the therapy, I, I don't need to know this. And you may have known some of the stuff already because you've been in two, two rounds, three rounds, but I just want to say thank you for being open to still being coached, for saying to yourself, I don't know, and but yes. I, I'm gonna stick to this. I'm gonna commit to this because I want to get to know myself. Like, thank you for that, girl. Just thank you. I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Like you made that container so vibrant. You brought your energy. Um, people felt safe around you. Women, the women felt safe to connect with you, and I found that so beautiful. So thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so my next question is: um, What were your breakthroughs? What breakthroughs did you have from this round that, that helped you figure yourself out more? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, there's always some massive, <laughs> massive breakthrough. But, um, yeah, coming into this container, you know, already having healed a lot of stuff. Um, and as you touched on, you know, still being able to ask questions and saying, look, I don't know it. It was identity work. Um, and so the breakthrough for me was really... You know, realizing that I had like such a tight hole on life, like I had control issues. (laughs) I wanted to, and you know, it was a subconscious thing, but I know like for years, maybe seven years, I've been trying to break free of that. And I just like, I don't know, I couldn't, you know, but for me, it, it was like really brought to my awareness in this container that I am trying to control not only the outcomes of my life, where my life goes I've been doing this since I was a kid really like I set out to live this perfect life you know mm-hmm. and then I was failing and I was struggling because it didn't go the way I planned it to um, but that's life I realized and then I was trying to control people's perceptions of me um, how people treat me and so the breakthrough for me was that the only control I have is over my mind is over my responses and reactions, my choices. Um, So that was a massive breakthrough. I'm still like reeling from it. I'm still sitting with it. Like, oh my gosh, this is big work. And I see a lot of chaos happening around me. And like you speak about this in the container. And so, and how it means you're up-leveling. And so I'm like, wow, okay, this is exciting. It means I'm up-leveling. And I'm just sitting with it. And it's really... um, it's such a different shift for me because before this container, if I was seeing this chaos around me, I'd be crumbling in a heap thinking my life's over. But this time I'm like, wow, you know, this is what's happening. And I know it means I'm clearing out old ways um, and I'm ready to step into the news. So that has been a massive breakthrough this time. Oh, wow. That is massive. And I know that like, people always ask like, the, the, like, how much money did you make? Did you find like, like people ask for those tangible um like benefits but this is such a huge thing knowing that you are only in control of yourself is what's going to help you become richer it's what's going to help you attract the right man that's what's going to help you sustain a family a business wherever you want you have to be in control of yourself if you're not in control of your thoughts you're going to let your feelings run the show and usually our feelings are are cemented in fear so can you imagine like we are not in control of our thoughts and we're letting fear run the show. That's why a lot of people just stay stuck in their, in, in their situations. They stay stuck in their challenges. They don't feel like there's any way out because the fear has told them there's no way out. 
but you can control that feeling you can control that thought and i say this like throughout the whole container like the re reason why you ladies are here to take your power back because for far too long we've 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 been sold the idea that we're victims and we're not we're not victims. The only victim we are is to our thoughts. We are letting our thoughts and our feelings run the show. And Alhamdulillah, Nashri, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad you you have that power within. Like for me, that is huge. That's priceless. Like that is yeah. priceless to know the power is within you and you mm. get to control that. Oh, girl. I, I, <laughs> yeah, like just ditch the people pleasing, you know, trying to prove my innocence, trying to prove myself. Oh my God, I was giving away so much of my power, always trying to like get validated by people. Like that's what ends up happening. And we say we don't want to be a people pleaser, but how do you stop it? You know, how do you actually, but this is where we get to do the work in a container such as this one. So yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. validating. That was such a big thing. That's, that was used to be my big thing, like trying to prove myself. I'm trying to prove that I'm successful. I'm trying to prove that I can do it. And this is what takes us into our masculinity. That when you're in that space of proving, you're going to end up manipulating. And I remember I said that in the container that people pleasing is just a sign of manipulation. You're trying to you're trying to avoid people seeing you for who you really are. And who you really are is a very beautiful thing. It's that you force yourself to believe you're not. And you're worried that, oh, if this person saw me for who I really am, would they like like me would they really like me so let me go and please them let me go and do the most for them and all that does is build resentment up in your body because you never get what you expect you never get the reciprocation because you didn't come from the energy of like I'm I'm authentic I'm confident I have the power within me and I want to pass that on to the person I'm talking to instead when we feel like we're not good enough we come with that victim mentality and say to ourselves oh that person not going to like me let me please them let me burn myself out let me overgive and that's where all that people pain comes from um okay last question that's um let's say there's a woman who's thinking of signing up for sacred feminine pleasure and she knows that sacred feminine pleasure will change her life what advice can you give her to just take that step and just enroll the advice i give is um you know, I want to say, just do it. <laughs> like we always say that, just do it. But it sounds almost too easy. Um, you know, I guess if you're looking to up level um, and you know it's going to benefit you, like you already know this program can do, you know, can give you the results you want. Um, and you've just got some hesitations. Maybe you're thinking, um, I don't know, you know, um, I'm going to invest this money. Am I going to get the returns on it? Am I going to see tangible changes? Or what if I don't see changes? That was something a fear I had maybe in the first round. Like, what if I don't see changes? I kind of felt like even when I was doing healing, that somehow I was a failure. Like other people get um, breakthroughs and changes and I don't think I can. Like that was a big fear for me. Um, so, you know, you could be thinking about a bunch of things um but what i say is is that if you actually take the steps just take the chance actually bet on yourself um you're going to be so pleasantly surprised um but like we already know that so i would say like really trust in yourself because this is the first step um you're taking accountability um, you're taking responsibility for your healing because um, just by saying yes, once you get into the container, it's not somebody else. It's not the coach um, doing the work for you. you. Like you have to, you're doing the work. You, you've got the answers within you as you you say to us and like as the coach, you help, you're holding that space for us, helping us bring it out. And so, um, you know, you've got those answers within you you need the support to actually pull through to the other side to become the person you want to become and um you know as a person who's like dealt with a lot of stuff over the years and tried a lot of healing um like it was like it was my life's mission to heal to break generational curses to break patterns it hasn't been easy um, but what I can say as somebody who's had all of this experience, I feel like I could make a career out of it. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> but container is so different, like what you offer, all the tools that you hand to us. Um, it's not a one and done. 
you'll come through the container. And as you mentioned earlier, maybe a week later, like all of the stuff will come to the surface. Even after the container, things stick with you and you've got the tools and it's like you've been equipped for life. You know, you're not just left floundering out on your own by yourself trying to figure it out or oh now you know I'm seeing chaos and it means I haven't healed it doesn't mean that at all it just means that you know you realize like for myself I realize this is life um it doesn't mean all the problems are eliminated it just means I've become stronger or I've become more in touch with myself and that's something that I really love like I've come to know myself have awareness I've come to like myself that even when things happen, instead of thinking, oh my God, that was so shameful, I'm so embarrassed, I'm like, okay, hang on, um, let me choose me, let me be there for myself. So it's such a beautiful experience to go through this container. So if you are kind of thinking and wondering and maybe you're doubting yourself, maybe you're um, a little bit nervous, how am I going to speak about such big things in front of other people? Like, you know, don't worry about it because as you've mentioned earlier that all the women are so supportive there's no judgment and you hold that space for us so you know yeah just sign up oh that's really you're making, you're making me literally like making me cry because when you just said that you're like it's not it's not like your problems are all going to be solved but you're going to know how to handle them you know this yeah. like I know like right now there's so many people in the world like who are going through problems and just wish they had a way out the way out is this container the way out is the tools that I give you the way out is working on your subconscious programming and I feel like I feel like people miss the point sometimes that they think to themselves oh if I do the healing then my life is going to be like a I'm going to be a princess in, in a castle and you know my knight is going to come and save me maybe like you'll end up saving yourself and then when you save yourself you'll be able to like extend out that reach to other people and be in that state of attraction where you're attracting abundance but it starts with you like you have to change yourself you have to heal yourself you have to work on yourself um so yeah just saying that girl I don't, like my heart was like fluttering I was saying to myself oh my gosh just you get in a stream you get to like life you're gonna be you're gonna be faced with challenges with who you become and how you show up that matters it's gonna help you go through those challenges and I feel like everyone needs that everyone needs those emotional tools to be able to go through a challenge and see it for what it is like it's not the chaos that's creating the problem it's you and how you feel about the chaos I forgot to ask you one question um <laughs> What was, what was, I know you're, you're in Australia, right? So the time yeah. difference was massive. So, and I know you didn't, did you show up for, you showed up for most of the calls, but what was it like watching the recordings? Did you feel like you still got breakthroughs? Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I think maybe one, maybe one coaching I had on recording, um, but, um, you know, I still felt, okay, so this was it, like I would ask a question in the Facebook group and I still felt like I got coached, like um, you get it, right? Like you, you're intuitive that way. So you would give, you don't just kind of give a generic answer, you give um, the tools of how to um, handle this, you know, whatever, whatever question I've asked. And um, even watching the abundance rewiring on recording, is very powerful because oftentimes like I'll go back and I'll do it again. And it's just, um, oh, I don't know, it goes very deep. Um, and just to talk about that a little bit as well, like I remember in the first, oh, before I joined the first round, I thought, oh, I don't know, you know, it goes pretty quickly and I, I kind of need to, I'm an overthinker, I'm a deep thinker. I don't think I'll benefit from this. Um, but I want to give it a go. And um, I actually found that you know, it, it was like letting go of a, of a block that I had that allowed me to actually benefit from the abundance rewiring. So whether it was um, the rewiring or the coaching sessions or having a question on Facebook, I found that I benefited a lot. Like I would watch a lot of um, the second night's questions on replay and um, listening to the ladies. And I still felt that the energy is there. It's resonating with me. And, um, you know, I can make sense out of it. And then downloads would start. And then I could ask a question in the group. Um, and of course, you're always there through the week. And um, you're coaching us. And you're answering these questions and giving support. And the other ladies are there as well. So, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't go wrong. You can't miss out on it. And I know there were a lot of ladies who were mainly catching up on the replay. 
um, but they, they were also showing signs of breakthroughs. So um, yeah, it's so beneficial. Oh, love that girl, love that. Nashreen, thank you so much for being such, oh, just, I could speak to you all day, Nashreen, like the gems you have, mashallah. May Allah bless you. And thank you so much for investing in Sacred Feminine Pleasure. It's such a joy. It's such a joy to be around. It was such an honor for me. Like I'm so honored to have been able to coach you in these, in these containers. It's been amazing. That's a beautiful thing to say, Rosie. It's been such a pleasure to be in the container and thank you for everything. So welcome. Okay. Assalamu alaikum.